Hey everyone, in this episode of Project E46, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks behind installing eBay fender flares like this. Step zero is to, well, first buy fender flares. Obviously, if you hop on eBay, there are tons and tons of different options. So you want to kind of take a second to figure out what's going to fit your car best. Now, if you look on eBay, there are different kinds of flares. Very generally, you're going to find ones that are more tapered like this, or ones that are kind of broad across the whole radius of the flare. And then from there, you're also going to want to figure out how wide of a flare you need for your car. And when they arrive, it'll look something like this. You'll get this box and a nice flare in a bag, like so. Most all these eBay flares work the exact same way. You'll notice there are these flat sections. They're kind of dimpled out of the flare. This is how you're going to mount the flare to the body of the car. Now what you're basically going to do is using a punch, you're going to punch little holes in the flare on those little flat sections, probably like right in the center. And then this punch will give you a great starting place to drill out holes in the flare. Now with this kind of plastic, you're wanting to use a, either a step drill bit or start with a very small drill bit to start going through. So the plastic doesn't just shred when you try and drill through it because it's very brittle. But basically you're gonna drill out these holes right here to mount the flare. The size of the hole you're gonna need to drill is gonna depend on the next item. Now, the size of the hole you drill in the flare is gonna depend on your rib nuts. Now, what the rib nut you might be asking? Well, it's this little guy. What this is, is a little fastener with a knurled edge. Now, what you do is using a rib nut tool, you can actually press this guy into the bodywork and as a threaded center. That way, you basically place this into the bodywork behind where the flare is gonna go. That way, you can put a bolt through the flare and into the rib nut. It's really clever. But in order to install one of these, you unfortunately do need a rib nut gun or rib nut tool. Now, fortunately, my buddy had this one, uh, so I was able to borrow it from him. You can buy these on eBay for about 50 to 60 bucks, or I'd go to find a local rent tool or maybe off Craigslist or something, some guy renting one of these things out. Um, this basically allows you to, sorry, I work a little differently, but you basically uh, put the rib nut on the end right there, and then, you adjust the tool properly, like I've not done for this sake of this video, and you go BAM! And it kind of crimps this rib nut into the bodywork of the car. Here, I'll cut two clips of me doing this so you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. But yes, the size of your rib nut will dictate, obviously, what sort of fasteners and nuts you're, nuts you're gonna use to attach your flare to your car, and obviously what size holes you need to be drilling in the flare and in your bodywork. The next step is obvious. You need to mock the flare up onto the fender of your car and see how it's gonna sit. How is the fitment? Now obviously being a generic eBay flare, the fitment is just not gonna be perfect. Uh, but the thing to know is that you should probably, buy, well hopefully, hopefully you bought flares that roughly match the contour and width of your wheel opening or your fender opening. But these flares can bend like this and when they bow, they actually widen the flare because you're tightening that radius. So you're gonna kind of like bend it and mock it in place as the house is gonna sit on the fender. Then, once you have your holes drilled out of this guy, you basically mock it up onto the fender with tape and then use a Sharpie or paint pen and kind of mock out on the fender where you need to drill your holes to put your rib nuts. Hopefully I've filmed a nice time lapse of all this, you understand exactly what I'm talking about, but once you drill the holes in the flare and mock it onto the fender of the car, it's pretty straightforward. So once you have your flare mocked into place and your fenders marked with where your rib nuts need to go, it's time to remove your flare and actually use the rib nut gun on your fenders. Uh, most of these eBay flares come with provisions for six rib nuts or six fasteners. That's what I ended up doing. Uh, making the eBay flare fit, at least on my E46, um, the E46 front fender is very complicated. It's a very complex shape if you look at it. There's multiple curvatures, multiple different angles. So that made it a bit tricky. Uh, what I best found was to mock up the flare on the fender such as the opening of the fender flare was at the same height parallel to the height of the fender opening on the stock car otherwise would be. Uh, that was able to kind of perfectly line up with a body line 
on the stock fender so that the flare would not interfere and kind of all fit in place. Again, it's not gonna be perfect. These are generic fender flares that are quite rigid and cheap, made of cheap plastic, ultimately. But that's what I ended up doing. Uh, hopefully, again, I have nice clips here so you can see exactly how this all works. Once you do this to one fender, it's gonna take you a long time for the first fender, but after that, it's a piece of cake. So congratulations, once you've rib nutted your stock fender, you're halfway through the painful bit. Now, obviously with fender flares, the goal is to actually cut the inside of the fender lift to give you that extra wheel clearance, especially under compression as the suspension moves up and down. So the next step is to bolt the flare in place and kind of check out your handiwork. Now, obviously the nice thing about the rib nut is that it's easily removable. So all you have to do is buy a bolt that matches this. In this case, this is an M6 to one thread pitch. So you go buy a bunch of M6 bolts and that's how you bolt your fender, your flare onto the fender really straightforward. So bolt it on and see what you got. Now in my case unfortunately my measurements were not the best. My flare was a little bit off and so I actually ended up having to redo some of the rib nuts on certain areas of the flare. I guess that's why it's important to measure things more thoroughly. Uh, this process is much easier if you use a second set of hands. But in any case once I got the flare sitting in the correct spot where I thought was the correct spot you need to remove the flare and it's time to actually cut up your fenders. Uh, the best way to do this is with a four inch cutoff wheel and then basically you're going to mark out the area where you think you need to cut the fender. Now for me, I basically looked at where I put the rib nuts in the fender and then measured about an inch below the rib nut and then made a line out of tape and then cut that whole area out with again the four inch cutting wheel and then in order to kind of round off any harsh edges, I ended up using a flap disc just so you don't cut your fingers when working on the fender or the flare going forward. So yeah, uh, cut your fenders off. Uh, it's worth noting here that you absolutely have to cut off more than you think, especially if this is a drift car like my E46 is and you put an angle kit on. Uh, it's weird to think about it, but um, once you're running these super low offset aggressive wheels, especially with an angle kit, uh, depending on your alignment and all that, the wheel actually needs a lot more clearance front to back. Uh, rather than up and down. So in my case, I actually had to cut pretty far of the fender towards the door side and really deep into the bumper on that side of the fender as well. But here's what I've done. See, this is the front bumper. I really had to clearance it here because I figured out when I was turning the wheel, the tire is actually snagging, not only on the bumper, but on everything behind the bumper back here and behind the fender back here. So I really had to work on clearancing this area where the bumper meets the fender. So I expect to do the same. There's a lot of plastic back here for the bumper mounts so with the clearance those. And then I more or less kind of followed the contour and arch of the stock fender and just cut it upwards. Now basically, the E46 fender has a flare in it from the factory. So the amount I had to cut was basically this bit should clear the tire under full compression because it already kind of arches and flares outward. Your car might be a bit different, but that's how my car was. I actually only had to cut about an inch to two inches of fender off the car. And then it looks kind of like this. Now in my case, I was able to retain uh, my inner fender liners, but I had to cut them as well. Um, that was just a personal choice. It might be easier just to remove these guys depending on how aggressive your wheel fitment is. Oh yeah, and be sure to hit this area with a bit of black paint or something because obviously you're leaving exposed metal. Now the nice thing about this is once you've done, because you have a rib nutted fender and presumably you've now clearanced your fender and bumper enough to clear your wheel at full lock, this is a quickly removable flare setup now. All you have to do is, in my case, bring a Phillips head screwdriver and my fender flare comes off in seconds. And insulation, likewise, is a piece of cake. See, check it out, fender flare is back on in just under a minute. Now, in my case, for my particular needs, I ended up buying a four inch flare, so it's pretty wide, but it's only because, again, the factory E46 fender has a bit of flare in it. The first place it comes out to about here. So it already has about a two and a half inch flare to three inch flare from the, fa flare from the factory. So that's kind of what I needed to clear this new wheel and tire setup, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, in order to make this fit better because these are generic, uh, you'll notice that I actually cut uh, the flare right here and treated it like a bumper piece and a fender piece. 
That's because on an E46 at least, there's obviously a notable gap between the fender and the bumper and the shapes are so different that I just found it was easier to cut the flare and treat it like a piece on the bumper and this flare is a piece on the fender. Again, if you have a nicer street car, we don't wanna do that, but that's just what I ended up doing. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is fitment because unfortunately, the fitment of the flare is not perfect as you'd expect from an eBay flare. While it looks pretty good here and pretty good here, you'll notice there is a slight bit of a gap here on this part of the flare. Now, this is from two things. First up, the gap spacing between this fastener, this fastener, and this fastener is just very slightly off. Really, this one needs to be like just here, and this one needs to be like just there. Uh, that's something I might be able to fix in the future, but unfortunately the size of the rib nut kind of gets in the way of that. Now the other thing you wanna do is if you, again, if you really care about proper fitment, is mold these flares better. Now there are two things you can do here. The first thing is you can buy a uh, fender flare trim. It's like a rubber trim piece that sits on the back of the flare and helps it adhere to the body line a little bit better. I'm gonna buy that in the future. Now the other thing is once you buy that trim that kind of goes between the fender and the actual flare, you're gonna to take a heat gun to the flare to better help it kind of mold and form to the contour of the stock fender. However, this is a drift car and I think I've done my due diligence uh, so far at this point. All right, everyone, so the fender flares are installed on the car and I've gone and driven it around the block and you know, checked for any rubbing. Again, that's where you really wanna make sure you really clearance the insides of your fenders and your bumpers, make sure that wheel can travel, you know, full steering lock and under compression, things like that without rubbing. And this is the final result on my car. Check it out. Again, it's not perfect. This is a generic eBay fender flare. Again, I clearly didn't do the very best job of installing these things. My first time doing flares, you can see some areas where I messed up. It's not the prettiest, but fortunately, this is a drift car, and as long as it looks good from 10 feet, I'm chilling. Now, for those of you wondering, I've gone through all this work because I've installed new suspension in this car, and crucially, the SLR Ultra Front Angle Kit, which kicks out the track width almost like three inches total in the front. And obviously in order to get all that great steering angle, I needed a really low offset wheel that's pushed out really far. That way I could clear the chassis at full steering lock. So my wheel fitment is as follows. Up front is a BMW M Parallel. That's an 18 by 8, 13 offset from a BMW E39 5 Series. And from there, I put on the car a 12.5 millimeter spacer to push the wheels out even further. The end result is a 18 by 8 effective zero offset wheel with a 230 by 40 tire. And I think it looks absolutely great. I'm really stoked on the way the car looks. It looks really purposeful, really aggressive, really functional. But what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Did I ruin my car with eBay fender flare? Did I make it a little bit more functional and cool as a drift day car? Uh, yeah, let me know, and I'll see you guys next episode. All right, bye.